stop supporting racists like this. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to broke ass niggas. <sighs> this video to me was obviously made to make people angry. And it worked. The amount of people that stitched, duetted, remixed, and flat out reposted this video was wild. Normally I would just scroll on and forget about it, but because this story became so big, that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode of Nishi's Noggin, where I share with you what's on my mind, and that is this video. Now, most of the content that I saw, including the post that brought this video to my attention, it was the folks that were appropriately appalled by what she was saying that we're commenting, that we're sharing and reposting that really brought this video viral. Because when I was looking through people commenting, I primarily saw a whole bunch of people that were just like, oh my God. The word spread very quickly when this video went viral this week. Who is this young white lady that's using that word inappropriately? People notified the company that employed her. The employer put out a statement saying the obvious they don't tolerate hate speech and immediately took action once they were brought to speed on the language that she was using. So she was fired. So yay, the racist got fired and this should be a good thing, right? Look at her response. So a recent video of mine seems to have um, upset members of a certain community and it this um, all the backlash just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that... I still couldn't find a care. She doubled down without even flinching. She also was posting on X, formerly Twitter, that she's found a whole new career in conservative media. I checked out her page when I first started looking into the story, which was like two days ago. She had barely under 90,000 followers on there. Now she has well over 100,000 followers on X in less than 48 hours She's gained over 10,000 followers on X. And I briefly scrolled through her page and I saw that she was already getting interviews with other conservative media talk shows. There's articles that are being done about this whole situation and so much more. And all of this is happening for her, not to her, for her, because anti-racists made her go viral. And to me, it was very obvious that that was exactly what her intention was in the first place. It just saddens me that it worked. Like, damn, you took this, this really hateful word and you used it to incite hate and rage. And that's what we're going to talk about. So what exactly is it that she did? It's called rage baiting. And it's become one of the most popular ways to get engagement across all media platforms and honestly, all industries. Rage baiting is doing something with the intention of pissing people off because for whatever reason, it works. It works really well too. People are far more likely to engage and interact online when they've been emotionally triggered. And one of the most triggering feelings that we can feel for whatever reason online is anger. When we see something that angers us, we're ready to get on there and start typing away. It was used to manipulate a lot of people in this case. You see it all the time. Oh my God, this, I'm now I'm already getting upset. Like those fake ass videos of incompetent boyfriends, for example. Like what was that one video that went viral? This one girl, who went to her boyfriend and there was just ketchup on the countertop, on the kitchen countertop. And she was like, clean it up. And he just made the mess worse. Girl, please be so serious. That was not real at all. There's the videos where they're catching cheaters coincidentally in the act or the horrible couples pranks videos that always are happening in the car. And it's so funny to me because it's two people, right? So the one person that's playing the prank is sitting in one seat. They set up the phone on the dashboard of the car. Then the other person comes in and and never acknowledges that there's a big ass phone that is recording both of them on the dashboard and then prank ensues. And it's always just like, can y'all be serious? Like, just be serious. Now, with that being said, do those type of videos cause any harm? No, it's acting, it's pranks, whatever. 
everybody's got to make their money, right? So if you're going for the rage bait and you're doing some harmless stuff like, oh, watch watch my boyfriend not know how to clean up a kitchen countertop. Nobody's getting hurt over that. Those type of videos are harmless. But I don't think that the original video that's in question is harmless. Personally, I don't think so. The use of the word that that young lady used, that racist word, was not only intended to get a reaction out of the viewers, but I also feel like it gives is everybody who does engage with it, the sense that they are standing up for what they believe in and what's right and making a change. Like, that's not what's happening. Like, I was seeing a lot of comments that primarily were, oh my God, that's racist. How dare you say that? Did we just hear what I think she said? Or eventually I started to see the supportive comments roll in. Freedom of speech. Why is it that we can't say that word? I hear it in a rap song. I want to be able to say everything. It's my right as an American. (laughs) You start to feel like you're getting involved in this really important conversation because it's involving race, hate, and it's involving your freedoms, and it gets people going. And while I don't agree with the use of that word, and I do think that that word is a racist word that should not have been used by the woman, honestly, the Only thing that you're doing by engaging with a rage baiting video like the one that she did is boosting engagement. I really want you to think about social media moving forward in this way. Your engagement is currency. Currency. When you double tap, when you hit the thumbs up, when you comment, subscribe, or even when you share, especially when you share, it's like social media money. It's like spending money or investing in the content that you are watching. And I think it's important for you to be conscious, like in any case, be conscious of how you spend your money and be conscious of what you're investing your money into. Again, at first, I was seeing a lot of comments and reposts with people saying, did she say what I think she said? Now, who does she think she is? And so on. And You think that you're doing the right thing by emphasizing how wrong her behavior is, but you're not. You're not doing anything except elevating her platform, giving her more, because the more that people invest in something, the more successful it is. So the more that you're spending on this particular content, the more that you're investing in this particular content, you're amplifying it. You're giving it a bigger reach. It's reaching out to bigger audiences. She's very aware of this. I hope you know, I hope you know that she is very aware of this. She knows exactly what she's doing, okay? Now, I felt comfortable discussing it at this point because news outlets are sharing the story now. Girl, when Yahoo News puts out a whole article, it's a wrap. This is Pete and she's elevating and that's really all that's happening right now. So with all of this being said, I want to know what you spend your social media money on. For me, I really like engaging with content that's funny or informative or nostalgic or sexy. (laughs) And if you could combine any or all of these things together, you got me. It's on. I'm into it. Okay. So I'm curious to know, please let me know in the comments below. What exactly is it that you like to spend your social media money on? My hope is that I was able to educate at least like one person on this stuff because I really feel like I'm continuing to see a rise in rage bait content. And all that's happening is that you're being manipulated. And while there are times where, yes, like I had said, it can be relatively harmless. There's also ways where it can be really harmful. And I think that platforming someone who is, whether they regularly use it, I wouldn't be surprised if this girl never uses that word, except for in that video. But Platforming someone based purely on the fact that she was using inappropriate language, racist language, it just feels really counterproductive. And it feels like all of the people that were engaging with that content and feeling like they were standing up for what's right, you really did the wrong thing. And I know that that seems really, really ironic. And it's like, what do you want me to do? Shut up. I want you to engage with the things that are productive, the, engage with the things that are helpful, engage with the things that are promoting positivity, unity. Not that. Just keep that in mind. Let me know in the comments below what exactly it is that you want to spend your social media money on. I hope you'll give me a couple dollars. (laughs) I could go on for days about this. And that's why I have Nishi's Knockin' where I share with you what's on my 
mind. I got a whole bunch of episodes for you to check out. You got options. If you want to hear about my unemployment, I talk about it. You want to hear about the time that I met JLo? I'm talking about it. Get into it. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.